Mute. Yep. Are you muted? Yep. Okay. So technology has been taking over society basically as we know it. So researchers at Cisco have conducted a study and there's nearly twice as many objects connected to the internet than people in the entire world. And this begs the question of technology being a part of societal norms and how technology takes part of our daily lives. And I bet everyone listening to this speech has at least one object connected to the internet in their possession, if not more. So society as a whole has becoming too too reliant and too prevalent on having technology for everyday tasks and has yet to take a step back and realize that uh, there's going to be consequences and there's going to be actions and effects that take... Here, I'm going to stop because I accidentally turned my phone on. My phone's on. Oops. Sorry about that. No worries, man. It happens. That's what I did. That was the first thing I remember to do was mute and turn off my phone. Yeah. It's all good. That's why it's, yeah, it worked out that it was both the two of us. Okay. So I will start again. All, all right. right. You need it. Hold on. And go. Okay. So technology is taking over society as we know it. So according to a study conducted uh, by Cisco, there are nearly twice as many objects connected to the internet than people in the world. So essentially this begs the question of technology being a part of society and eventually it's gonna come to the point where society doesn't realize the consequences of technology taking over in the world. So. I bet everyone listening to this speech has at least one object connected to the internet in their possession, if not more. So society as a whole is becoming too reliant on technology for everyday tasks and has yet to take a step back and realize the consequences of the use of technology. So according to a study done by Business Insider, the average person spends an average of nearly two and a half hours on their phone, not in a week, not in a month, every single day. So this separation from the outside world is what is what is causing society to be taken over by technology. So I, obviously we as an audience could just put down the screen and could just say, that technology isn't a part of our lives as much as it actually is. However, a lot of companies and organizations have made strides in the direction of less technology and have taken steps that society wants them to in order to put down the screen and in order for them to just take a step back. Um, so the television network Nickelodeon has been a global leader in this path. So uh, for the past 10 or so years, they've hosted an annual worldwide day of play in which their network goes black for an entire day in order to encourage children and teens to play outside and stay off their television, their smartphones, and all the over-reliance of technology that takes a part in their daily lives. So many might actually wonder how large companies can stop their heavy reliance on technology, and many might say that it's impossible. Or some might say that technology molds our society in a way that is too much just to put down a screen and say that we'll never use technology again, which is true. But 
experts encourage more interaction and teamwork within a company to not heavily rely on technology. And this is one way that uh, companies and company leaders have taken a step into uh, taking a step back from the screen and going back to how it used to be. So experts say that when uh, lunch at a company was extended to 90 minutes as opposed to the normal 60 minutes, the reliance of technology at a company where the study was conducted went down by nearly 22%. And because of this, because of this increased communication and because of this interaction between everyone, uh, technology reliance went down as well, um, not just in the company, but outside of it through some of the some of the employees. So by not putting down the screen and by not relying on nature and society as it is now, society could easily become corrupt much more than it actually is, not just political, not just in a climate, but how it is now. And too many people will become so transfixed and so heavily relied on the technology around them that they will basically become resistant to change in any other way if we don't put down our screens. And they will become too reliant on their technology around them that there will basically be no other natural society to rely on. And I know that this is an extreme and I know that this is like looking at like end of the world situations, but like this is the way that it could become if we don't stop becoming so reliant on our technology. So I ask that everyone put down the screen and gander at the world around you and take nature basically for how it is and learn to essentially interact with each other personally and not just through a screen. And by doing so, society can learn to become one within another and we can all communicate in a greater form by not being so reliant on technology. Thank you. Nice. nice. Thanks. Okay. I am ready. Ready? January 9th, 2016. Sitting around the firehouse just any other day. Just had lunch um, around the kitchen table. Laughing, carrying on, blowing off steam. The speakers break open. The alarm tones go off. The dispatcher advises engine 52, rescue 52, squad 52. Respond to motor vehicle accident. Um, Northwest 27th Ave and Northwest 8th Street for a car versus pedestrian, possible child involved. As we make our way to the vehicle, you know, the uh, heart rate goes up. The adrenaline starts to dump and then the arrival on scene to so arrive on scene getting out of the truck a young female i hear her cries i didn't see him i didn't see him i swear i just didn't see him as i approach a car a small hatchback there's a bmx bike that's seen better days and as i walk um to the front of the car there under the bumper lies the lifeless body of an adolescent male child texas transportation institute deemed reaction time doubles when distracted while driving one to two seconds is what the normal reaction time is when you're distracted it could take three to four seconds car and driver has done many tests using um, different ages, um, genders of people, and on perfect conditions, the uh, best driver had a reaction time of 0.45 seconds. While reading a text while driving, their reaction time became 0.57 seconds. While sending a text, it became 0.56 seconds. The average distance with that reaction time led to 21 extra feet. That's an entire car length of reaction time. The worst time was 0.57 seconds was the, was the reaction of this gentleman. 
1.44 seconds to uh, react while reading a text and 1.3 seconds while, re while texting. In comparison to while driving intoxicated with a 0.04 alcohol, that gentleman's reaction time was a 0.64. That was at 35 miles per hour. Imagine 75 mi 70 miles per hour. You can imagine the differences. That point, that 1.44 reaction time that, that led that car to go 45 extra feet. That's two and a half car lengths. The National Safety Council has done some results. In 2016, 0.16 million accidents were the result of texting and driving. Of those, 390,000 were injuries, 3,450 were fatalities, and of those, 263 were teens. Some other interesting facts, one in four car accidents today is because of texting and driving. That's six more times likely to getting in an accident while drinking and driving. Now, I don't condone drinking and driving, but just imagine those statistics are staggering. Megan Warner was home on our first break from Gainesville on a Christmas break. She, um, in the last two years, even though the accident was ruled an accident and nobody was charged, she was unable to go back to school. She wanted to be a doctor um, and possibly go become an OBGYN. She's tried twice to commit suicide, um, but with counseling and the help of Maria Padilla, she hopes to in the near future to get back on her feet. Corner advises that nine-year-old Jose Padilla, born, born March 12, 2006, died of injuries resulting from the car impact. Maria describes Jose as a bright young man who loved video games and soccer. Through faith and admission that she herself has often used a cell phone while driving, even possibly texted and drived. She has, in her heart, began to heal and forgive. She meets Megan monthly to talk about it. So I beg you, when you're with others and they go to pick up that cell phone and respond to that text, or that phone call, remind them that 1.6 million, that's one in four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. You yourself, the next time you're driving and you decide to pick up the phone, think of Megan, Maria, and Jose. That was good. Um, okay. So I just hope it was over. It was between that three to five minutes, which I I'm pretty sure.